So the other day, uh, I got to meet Misa, who is a, a local legend and a wealth of traditional knowledge uh, of how uh, New Wayans interact with natural resources. And uh, that's information that no scientific study will ever give you. Oh my God, look at that. That's why he named us, because he think our people eat human flesh. So this is the story that, I, I knew a little bit of, about the Savage <laughs> Island story, but I didn't know that part of it. The fruit bat was just the coolest experience ever. Uh, I'm terrified of, of, of bats. I'll put it on you. Okay. And I'll take it off you. Okay. <laughs> Don't shake it off. Okay. Don't pull it off. Okay. Don't do whatever. Because it'll cut you. What do you mean it'll cut me? Are probably three animals that I that I really don't like. And I'll be in the water with sharks and I have no problem. I'll be in the water with, with white sharks that, you know, and, and that everyone's like, oh my God, that's such a big deal. Uh, aren't you scared? But for some reason, my brain doesn't kick in the logic when it comes to bats, snakes, or spiders. And those are three animals I just really don't like. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, the weirdest experience. I felt as he put the fruit bat on me, I thought I should be terrified of this. Uh, but yet I, I was sort of in awe by the size of this animal. Like you're a mammal, but you have wings. And it was just the weirdest experience. Hi. <laughs> This is awesome. Oh my god, I cannot believe I'm holding a fruit bat right now. And so of course now I'm thinking about where bats go and how can they protect bats through some kind of spatial planning. So we spent some time talking about uh, about some other animals. New Anne's uh, valued fruit bats and uh, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, Unga. That was a horrible pronunciation, but uh, Unga. These coconut crabs, they're the world's largest land-living uh, arthropod, uh, and uh, they, they can live for 60, 80 years. Um, unfortunately, they're also a delicacy, as are these fruit bats. Um, and I had heard about these prior to, to coming here, but I'd never, I've never seen one in person. They're a lot harder than I thought. I thought, they would, I thought this part would be soft. Um, no, this because I just, I just, I'm just thinking of it like a giant hermit crab. Uh, coconut crabs are, are very cool. Uh, they're animals that begin their life in the ocean. Um, and they begin their life as a hermit crab, uh, but then ditch the, the shell and develop their own shell. Hermit crabs are sort of uh, uh, find out other people's homes, uh, clean out the stuff that's inside it and use their shell. And then as they grow, they find new shells. Coconut crabs, as they grow, they find new shells. And then there's a point where they just say, you know what, forget it. Uh, we're growing our own shell. And, uh, and so they're, they're very cool. They look like a little naked hermit crab, uh, but that's become armored. Tickle, tickle. It used to be that people would export these coconut crabs, uh, send them as gifts home and things like that when the population you know, was, was crashing. And they outlawed sending them home and uh, exporting of, of these coconut crabs. And, uh, and now it seems their numbers are coming back a little bit. Uh, they're still an animal that I, that I think about a lot and that I worry about. They're very, they have a lot in common with whales. They're slow growing, they take a long time to reach maturity, uh, they live for a long time. And that's very similar to a lot of marine mammals. Um, and so then my brain started going on where these animals go and how can we better protect them.